Hello and welcome to another evening of Frank Conversation here on Hard Copy, coming to you from our studios in Abuja. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. What a week it's been. Well, I hope you have fuel in your tanks now with all the hassle that many Nigerians face this week, trying to get the commodity which had become precious in their cars and generators. But we weren't too harassed to be further scandalized by the news which came from the stable of the Nigeria Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA. Many news hounds had thought the proposed strike by university lecturers under the aegis of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, was going to be their biggest story for Monday this week. But nothing prepared them or the nation for the embarrassing bombshell which the NDLEA revealed. With intelligence at our disposal, the agency believes strongly that DCP Kiari is a member of a drug cartel that operates the Brazil, Ethiopia, Nigeria illicit drug pipeline. Having failed to honor the official invitation, NGLE has no option but to declare DCP Akbe Akiari of the Nigerian police wanted right from this very moment. Nigeria's most decorated policeman was allegedly a member of an international drug cartel it's so difficult to wrap our heads around it, but there's a video, a fact which is hard to dispute. This led the police to quickly apprehend the suspects and hand them over to the NDLEA for investigation. Aside the back and forth statement issued by the NDLEA and the police, which bellies signs of strains, perhaps as a result of the saga, the initial statement put out by the NDLEA is quite telling of not just the complexity of Nigeria's drug problem, but just how determined we all must be to clean it up, as well as the agencies which we've charged to do so. On Hard Copy tonight, we cast our light on the saga as we wait for the suspects to be charged to court. To do this with us is Ario Dari Atoye, who is the Executive Director of Adopt a Goal for Development Initiative. Welcome to Hard Copy. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm going to ask you to wear your journalistic hat because I know that you um, were once a journalist. Absolutely. If you, as a journalist, just imagine that you were covering that press conference on that day when the NDLEA had just asked for a press conference as they normally would. Um, I do not know if anything would have prepared you for that sort of information which the NDLEA revealed. Um, as a journalist, what would have been on your mind? Uh, Mark, well, I, I think uh, um, reading your recap, I would say you gave it the exact uh, interpretation that I've been looking for in the last couple of days. And that's what you call embarrassing bombshell. Very embarrassing. And uh, believe me sincerely, for a man that was celebrated by the National Assembly, the, I think the House of Representatives to be precise, Definitely, it was very shocking. And um, I, we knew that uh, Abakari was already facing the issue of extradition based on his uh, alleged relationship and uh, probably alleged crime he committed relating with Osh Poppy. Uh, but uh, we didn't expect that a man who was going through uh, a sort of a suspended uh, trial both in the public and even within the police uh, system. Is it because we're yet to truly appreciate the problem? Of you know of what drugs do in our society, or maybe we not we do not realize just yet how deeply the problem has eaten into our society. Yeah, I think it's both ways. It's important for the CSU community, members of the NGOs, for them to actually look at this and not think it as what governments alone must do. And uh, we know that we have some international partners who believe that we have to fight these, who contribute and support one way or the other. But you see, there is nothing as good as the local environment itself, you know, participating in fighting this scourge. It's a scourge, it's a pandemic. And I want to encourage more people in the civil society like me. I, I would say that probably I came late into it, maybe because I saw what Jenna Marwa was doing. And uh, in the last couple of days, I think I've issued like two, three statements, you know, as I, if, if I'm not commending ND, the NDLA, I'm actually making a statement urging them to do some very important things. And I, and I think that's one thing, that's what leadership does. Leadership is very key. 
leadership can galvanize the entire country to get involved. And I think one area where the NDLE uh, must actually prioritize is that uh, it shouldn't just uh, leave it or believe that people would definitely just come to come and support what the agency is doing. And I think they must make it as a, also a deliberate effort to cut you know, more Nigerians. And I think they've been doing that. And I think uh, the leadership has visited a quite number of states, traditional rulers, based on when I Google to, to actually read some of the things they, they were doing under the leadership of General Marwa. And, uh, and I think I must commend what they are doing. But Nigerians must understand that this is very deep. Aside what happened in Guinea-Bissau, a few weeks ago, the, the Prime Minister of uh, uh, United Kingdom also said similar thing, talked about the, 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 the damaging effect of drug in the UK and that is hitting the society and it's creating a lot of problems. And he said he was going to fight it headlong. How we want Nigerians to commit to this? For instance, 2023 is coming. Uh, I want it to be part of our 2023 crusade. We want to have a presidential aspirant who will commit to fighting this illicit trade. And it's also very, I mean, it's a very serious issue. Uh, I would want to see more effort from President Muhammad Buhari in terms of uh, maybe supporting the NDLA. I want to see more pronouncement from uh, the National Assembly. For instance, I think about two weeks ago, I saw one of the lawmakers rose up and talked about the ritual killing without even looking at how drug is also contributing to that. And I think they, they, we really need to do a whole lot in this because it's one thing that can damage a whole society. Mm. And if we don't act very fast, when you look at the number of people who are taking drugs today and the number of lives that have been destroyed directly or indirectly, you will know that we have a serious time bomb on our hands. So we're only lucky that we have somebody who has committed to doing this and is giving it a fight. But Nigerians must know that what they've read in the newspaper, what they see, you know, uh, in the media is far, far little compared to what must be done. And it means that we need a lot of resources, we need a lot of manpower, we need a lot of commitment, you know, to be able to tackle this uh, uh, menace. Let me ask you about uh, your commendation of the NDLEA. It's interesting that you commended the NDLEA. You didn't commend the police. Was there a reason for that? Oh, you see... If I see something good, there is no way to way about it. The records will speak. Mm -hmm. I can't come on here, even if I'm paid, maybe by the NDLA or by the police, and I speak. If they have not done anything, people will say that guy has been paid. If there's no reason to commend that, them that, there. That, that, because no, in, I, this, in this instance, we have seen the IG... Uh, Surrender immediately. Uh, ask that the you know the suspects be rounded off and uh, rounded up and you know sent to the NDLEA. Uh, no, we we, in we that did regard. we did issued a statement yeah. and also urging the IGP not to allow this to become in, an intelligence rivalry. You sense that that could that there could absolutely be. because you see we cannot I cannot also dismiss a report which was uh, which was uh, published in one of the national dailies headline which indicated that some top brass of the police uh, hierarchy were trying to or try to meddle in this matter and probably to shield mm -hmm. uh, Abakiari from arrest and prosecution and mm -hmm. that wasn't good enough and I think it's important with what we've seen and the number of persons involved that the IGP you know should set up maybe an independent team to actually investigate what is going on. And that will also help Nigerians to perceive the police in a positive light. I, I will commend the IGP, at least for not uh, dragging this and for allowing the NDLA to do their work, but it mustn't stop at that. I know that uh, even though when some people wanted to say, let us also try to commend the police in the social media, they said no. If not that the NDLA had probably made a public statement, probably this, the entire, uh, 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 Thing will have been shielded in, in secrecy. So, if the police... Well, we don't know that, because then, uh, the police, I'm looking at this initial statement of the NDLEA now, uh, and it was saying that, I mean, when they, they did that press conference, that bombshell of a press conference, one of the things they tried to say was that the NDLEA was a new NDLEA. I'm going to read part of that statement. It says, now, anybody in, who's in touch with the reality of the renewed drug war by the NDLEA since January 18, 2021, not with the new NDLEA. Well, they tried to draw a, a line from when the NDLEA NDLEA became renewed. The police, however, in their own statement, you know, was also talking about how uh, they said the two arrested drug couriers also confirmed that they have been enjoying this relationship and had in this instance 
case of 19th January 2022 and were on their way out with their narcotics when they were apprehended by the police. Uh, I do know that the NDLEA noticed that part in the police's response and quickly put out another statement saying to correct some inaccuracies in the information in the public space that NDLEA officers at the Enugu airport and without doubt the records clearly showing how their ring works. Absolutely. So I'm sure you saw that uh, back and forth Absolutely. between the, the NDLEA and, and the, the police. police. Police trying to say that it was our officers who got the information and swooped in and the NDLEA saying, well, no, it is the police who actually got that information. But there are questions as to how uh, this, ca this cartel actually you know, smuggled in 25 kilograms Absolutely, of yeah. cocaine through our airport and no eyebrow was raised. Um, ma, ma, at the ma, ma, well, if, if we investigate uh, deeply, uh, properly, we realize that probably the staff of other agencies are involved. Because when you look at the police, I mean, the, our airport setup, definitely the NDLA, the police, are not the only one operating in that sector. Indeed. It means that it's important for us to do a deeper investigation. And this is where the National Assembly comes in in other climes. The parliament wants to get to the bottom of what actually happened. So there could be what we call a multi-partisan or bipartisan committee to investigate that. That's if the National Assembly is serious enough about you know, fighting this, uh, this drug uh, problem. However, is the uh, National uh, Assembly uh, equipped to do that sort of investigation? Yes, they are. They are. When you look at what happened, we pattern our uh, system after the presidential system of government in the United States of government. I mean, United States of America. Sorry. And when you look at in America, anytime you see something of this nature, you will see what we call bipartisan because there are two parties really. But here we have more than one party. And they set up a serious committee to probably ask questions from the leadership of these agencies to get to the bottom. And they ask important and critical questions, and they know how to source for evidence. What about the public. executive arm of government? Uh, so the, the, the they executive, sit and fold their the, hands? Yeah, the executive can do that. But sometimes it's always important because some of these agencies are product of the executive, both the NDLA, both the police, they are product of the executive. But one thing that is very sure is, when you look at in the poor court of public opinion today, you will know that people believe that NDLA has done what is right and what is just. And they believe that the police has not probably fully come out to state you know, everything that they knew about you know, this saga. So one thing the IG of police wants to do, for instance, if I were to advise him, is for him to probably to regain public confidence. You know, from the end size that expose a lot of things about the Nigerian police, the public confidence in the Nigerian police is actually very low. And the IG can do a lot, you know, to regain that trust. For instance, with this development, the IG can decide to set up a thorough investigation to look into the high wired network of you know what Abakai is doing who are the people involved they can go into phone logs a lot it can be a two three months or more investigation to unravel a lot of things that are not like to borrow from in mexico in the united states of america where this we have a bust in terms of arresting the i mean some of this drug cartel because it's a, it's a global network that is very deep and very solid and it will take a whole lot and sometimes if they don't have the capacity one well, that's one thing about this uh, this area you can always seek for knowledge they can even bring in experts ex expert from the United States, from different parts of the world, do to assist in the investigation. For instance, if the IGP want to do a thorough job and it doesn't have total confidence in his team, he can do a kind of a partnership and bring in you know, uh, resources from outside. It's allowed everywhere in the world. Do you sense the will to do that? Well, I, I, my worry, I don't think the will is there. The, uh, I don't think the will is there on the part because, you see, one thing about it is that it could unravel a lot of things that would be difficult for them to manage. Because even this Abakari, despite with all we, we've seen, some people are still trying to, you know, uh, twist the narrative. Don't be too surprised that in the next couple of days, you see people coming in the social media space or media trying to give it a different narrative and all of that. For instance, you know, when those things happen, the initial narrative was probably it could be an RNG to prevent Abakari from being extradited to United States. That America. cynicism is still there. You know, it's still there, but if we don't do due diligence, it will be difficult for international partners to share resources with us, knowledge with us, security and intelligence with us. Because if we have, if within our system, the security system, we continue to embed, I mean, we have a high profile criminals embedded within our security system. Do you know the implication, the optic that 
this Amber Akiari was once celebrated in the National Assembly. And, and unfortunately, I, I don't think anybody has moved the motion yet, asking the National Assembly to take uh, probably a proceeding in which to de-recognize what the, the honor given to Abaka. They need to do that very fast. It's in very important. And I think that maybe we're also going to ask the National Assembly to do that if nobody is raising that. Because, mm. look, you cannot soil the reputation of the National Assembly you know, with this honor. Welcome back. You're watching Hard Copy coming to you from our studios in Abuja. My guest tonight is Ari Odare Atoye, who is Executive Director, Adopt a Goal for Development Initiative, and co convener of the Center for Liberty. I, I want to take you, you back to the NDLEA. I mean, given also the statement of the police, uh, do you think that the NDLEA too needs to take a second look at its officers and, and to ask whether indeed their officers are rededicated, as they have said in their own statement? Mark, if there is any advice I'm going to give the NDLA, it's for them to also continue to look inward. You must continue to do internal checks because these are human beings. And we are talking about a trade that is very desiring, a trade that has a lot of money, multi-million dollars. So any human being can easily be compromised if you don't stand for something, if you don't have that tick big values that you protect. So. I don't think, uh, I understand that the, the, the leadership in the NDLA is trying to motivate the staff to do what is right and good and just, but I think they must continue to have what you call an internal mechanism for mon monitoring some of these officers, and this thing is doable. It's been done in other clients, and I believe that they can also learn from other clients in case they don't have a sufficient internal checks that they can always use to monitor these officers. So, I, I, and I'm happy in their statement, when I read it, they said they are, will also look inward. I think that is, it's a kind of an implied statement that they are not just taking it, you know, hook, line, sinker. They're also going to look inward, do their own investigation. And I think that's one thing we have to encourage them to do mm. because we are talking about human beings here. And, you know, Nigerians, not just Nigerians, globally, people believe that it's important to continue to encourage people for them to remain you know, steadfast in what they do. So the NDLA must not just uh, uh, brag about it, even though they've achieved a lot, and uh, based on what is going on, Nigerians are commending them, but they must continue to do due diligence to hand the confidence of Nigeria, because that is the only way that they will remain, they will have what we call a lasting legacy that we continue to appeal to the sensibility of the people. Should the National Assembly come back with the, the bill, and edit out what you don't like. Will this is silent. I don't think I told them what I don't like. All I said, there should be options. We must not insist that it has to be direct. It should be consensus and indirect. So if they do that, would you sign it? Yes, I will. I, I see that you've added your voice over and over again. Uh, to the clamor for the president to sign the Electoral Act. Why do you doubt that he's going to sign it as he's promised that he would? Well, you know, we, we raise the hope of Nigerians uh, that the president was going to sign this bill. That's record on the fifth occasion and when it was passed by the National Assembly, even though the issue of direct primary was in contention. We, we are taught that the president was a beneficiary of the direct primary system. And even if the president is going to have any concern, the president can sign um, now uh, sent back an amendment or request for an amendment so that ANEC you know, can start their preparation for 2023. But that didn't happen and we're disappointed. And it's not so good for us to continue to give the president you know, that opportunity, I mean, to give him that sense of uh, 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 responsibility that he's going to do it because he failed and it's, it's not good for us as, as CSO. So, but one thing is this, we are not that pessimistic. We are optimistic, that's why we are urging him to sign it, believing that the president will reason with us. For instance, I'm so happy talking with you on this because you 
your theme asked the president directly, and the president was very categorical. And he said, yes, if one, two, three are done, definitely we're going to sign this bill. Mm -hmm. And now those things have been requested, including the not-so-democratic option of a consensus. And I'm happy that the, the House of Representatives or the National Assembly gave it a due definition because consensus must not be another loophole to undermine party primaries. It must be based on written consent of all the aspirants involved. So Mr. President must now hand the confidence of Nigerians you know, by actually doing what is needful. Now, we are actually battling for time and we are headed called the sack because if you looked at it, if this president doesn't sign it by Monday, Tuesday, it means that we are in a serious problem. It means that INEC had to adjust the timetable again. That's if we are really going to operate based on the electoral act. Now, the, 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 the 30 days expiration is March 2nd. So, and for us to have 360 days within the window that is allowed by the electoral act, that has to be done by Tuesday. So if we don't do that, it means that we're in a serious problem. So we're only hoping that the president will listen to Nigeria and the president will act based on his own honor because his honor was at stake or is at stake because he said that to Nigerians. And it's also very important that this president has declined as St. one, two, three, four, five times. This bill is with him record six times. Twice this bill has started from the scratch. It started from the scratch in the eighth assembly. It also started from the scratch in the ninth assembly. This is not good enough. And you see why I am worried, mm -hmm. why I'm worried, is because the rate at which democracy is becoming distasteful in the region. Nigeria is the big brother here. Nigeria must be able to appeal to the suburb, the West African region, that democracy is good. And the only way we can do that is for the president to demonstrate goodwill at home, to show that democracy had value. And for democracy to have value, we must have a sound legal framework and as represented by this electoral. So if the president doesn't sign this bill, this president will not be able to stand on the platform of ECOWAS and be telling the other countries in Africa and the West African region that democracy is good because people are going to ask him questions. Mm. Don't forget that this president lost election three times. He went to court three times. Nobody, no Nigerian leader, should be more interested in electoral reform than President Muhammad Bari. This is not good enough. Well, your organization has also accused him, well, not him directly, but his attorney general of misleading him. Um, and, Absolutely. and perhaps, perhaps preventing him from signing, him, signing the electoral act. Why do you think that that is the, is the fault of the attorney general? Do you have any information to um, that? AGF Malami is acting like the state. Like that Franz King who called himself the state, even though some people have doubted the record. But you see, anytime you see a public officer in the mold of AGF Malami, always talked about national securities above public interest, national interest, then Nigerian people should be worried. And when you hear Mr. Malami talks about this, you really be wondering if he was an appointee, you know, who is meant to serve Nigerians, the people of Nigeria. This is not good enough. And one thing is that this is, he is the chief law officer of the country as guaranteed by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yeah, but on the, on the Electoral Act, have you heard that, you know, he has advised the president not to sign? No, his body language on uh, Shane Wakimbalo issue, a few, I mean, last week, also gave that indication because the same people who told him not to give a positive advisory last time have also raised concern because what they wanted actually was they wanted an open-ended consensus clause, which would have helped them to do whatever they wanted to do I I within their own party. And also the added clause, which may not also sit well with him, is the issue of uh, uh, elected, I mean, sorry, appointed public officers must resign six months to election, which is also good for a president that is fighting corruption because, you see, we cannot suffer double jihopadi. So you, you have already heard that there are indications that perhaps that consensus clause as defined in the amended electoral they are not act happy with it. and the appointment uh, that appointed clause. officers need two, to resign. Those are the two critical you, you issues. You think that you know, those could be the cogs in the wheel? Yes, but it's around. going to be difficult for him 
to adduce any strong argument, democratically speaking. Constitutionally, those who are elected cannot resign if they are going to contest, but those appointed should be, must now resign. Because you see, one thing you cannot take away is that when people are in office, they often use the instrument of government and the resources of government to help themselves when they are contesting for elections. You threw your hat in the ring in 2017 uh, as soon as they're not too young to run bill was passed into law. Do you hope to do so again? It's just as an aside. Well, you see, I did that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I've made it very clear I'm a political activist, mm -hmm. just like in the mold of Chief Ghani Fawemi, in the mold of Mandela. Apart from being a member of the civil society, I also want to seek political power one day to help my people. I did that to test the waters. You don't think that it's going, to, it's going to stop your ambition, I mean, your, not your ambition now, but your work no, um, no, no, in the no, CSOs no, no. and people no, might not. think that, okay, the lines between your work as a political activist and perhaps as a political actor might be blurred. No, 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 no. For instance, you're a media person, mm. Malbe. CNN, they take position. You know, in Nigeria, we define things with, with what I don't understand. It's not a problem if Channel TV decides to take a position. It's not a problem. Globally, it's allowed. We see this thing in the West where we took... So when I say, if I'm a, I'm a member of the CSU, I can decide to say this is a presidential candidate I'm supporting. It's my right. It's constitutional. It is only here where we try to be economical, to be deceptive. And I've told some of my friends in the civil society, I'm going to support a governor in a kitty state that I think can help my people. I'm going to support a presidential candidate. No apology whatsoever. It doesn't stop my work. What matters is for you to be altruistic about it, to be sincere about it, to be open about it, not the one you do in the night and in the day you do a different thing entirely. I said, no, it's not allowed. Ghanifa and me, a former CSO, sought to run for office in this country and he ran for office. So where did we get our own definition from? Channels can take a side, AIT can take a side, Punch newspaper can take a side. It's not really a problem. That's the way it is globally. So this idea of uh, people trying to meander and all of that, I don't know where we get this from. So it's not really a problem. Mm -hmm. If I'm a member of the civil society and I decide to say I'm going to support this candidate, I'm going to support this party, it's not really a problem. But when you do so, be very open about it. Be very decent about it. Say it, let the people know that this is where you stand. It's not a problem at all. Well, Mr. Ario Dari Atwe, thank you for coming on Hard Copy. Thank you for having me. Well, that's our program tonight. We welcome your suggestions and thoughts to the handles showing on your screen. Thank you for watching. I'm Malpe Ogunyesu. Good night.